Hey, what's up, guys? Tuki here, back again with another episode of my Seattle Sonics My League right here on NBA 2K19. For the first time, the Sonics are in the second round, despite a god awful but still kind of cool playoff format. We have advanced after defeating the Cleveland Cavs in five games, including our old friends Cameron Black and Dario Golob, and that sets the stage for a battle of the Titans. We were neck and neck with the Utah Jazz throughout the entire regular season, and it, as it turns out, winning the division over them via tiebreaker it was very important, as we will have home court advantage in this round. We know what our team looks like at this point. We are well aware. Thankfully, on the injury front, it could be worse. Lefteris Tarikas is still good to go. There were some questions over whether or not uh, there should be changes made to the lineup. I mean, obviously, Arnold and Bohannon have been phenomenal thus far in the postseason. If we look at what McDaniels was able to do in the playoffs, I mean, he's killing it thus far. 758 true shooting percentage. Very happy with him. Marsh had a 40-point game. Absolute monster. That said, uh, even Murray Hopkins doing very well. 601 true shooting is not exactly an offensive force. Doing a little bit better than Dorikas, and that's making me wonder whether or not we should perhaps get Murray out there a little bit more frequently. However, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? We might as well leave it as is. Everyone's going to be staying in. I think we're good to go for now. So the question is... What do the Utah Jazz look like? What is this team made up of? How are they able to stay neck and neck with our squad that is, of course, extremely well-rounded, even if it could be a little bit better? Yes, I refuse to let that go, and knowing that I made a mistake. And unfortunately, I probably could have gone the other way, because it's, it's, of course, sorted by the team names rather than... Yeah, you know what, here, I think it'd actually still be quicker to back out. It's sorted by the team names rather than by alphabetical order in terms of the, uh, the cities or states, which, you know, eh, eh, it should probably be sorted by city, but what are you going to do? That said, the Utah Jazz. Oh, boy. Okay, well, an aging LeBron James gave us trouble last year. How about an aging Kyrie Irving? 35 years old, 84 overall, still not having a tremendous run, we'll say, at least in terms of shooting percentage in this postseason thus far. So maybe that could be an advantage. Shooting guard Donovan Mitchell at 30 years old, 81 overall. Victor Oladipo still there as well. And Dion Hamlin, 30 years old now. So quite a bit of depth in terms of shooting guards. But Donovan Mitchell and Kyrie are the main two. At forward, Marcel Sirvin, the 30-year-old. Very interesting. Not exactly not exactly killing it thus far. They also have Mac Adrian, a 79 overall. At power forward, Okan Basturk at 26 years old. They also have Jordan Bell and Lonnie Wall at 20 years old in the center. Uh, Deonta Davis is there. Gus Braxton as well. I think... This is fairly straightforward. We should win this series. Said the same thing about the Lakers last year, though, but we should win this series. We have them outmatched almost in every way possible. I mean, sure, Sirvin's better than who we have at forward on paper, but you think about the two-headed monster that we have with, <laughs> with the freaking MVP caliber front court, Arnold and Bohannon. We should have this in the bag, I'd like to think. Let's get down to business. There is no time to waste. I want to get this show on the road. We take on Utah. Let's see what happens. Game one against the Jazz. Let's do this. And, of course, the pressure is absolutely on to take advantage of home court, to make the most of the advantage that we have on paper, again, we should be winning this series. There's no doubt in my mind. We have a six-point lead at the end of the first. Not too shabby, but of course, we've seen crazier lead changes. But we'll see whether or not they can contain the offense that we have. And I mean, thus far, it's looking good, but a late, uh, a late swing 
could really cut into this deficit or we could completely take over. 75 to 54 at halftime. It was close for a minute there and then we went off in the last two to three minutes. And this should be a relatively easy win at this point. It was close for a while, but with it being a 20-point game heading into the fourth quarter, you'd like to think this is going to be over. Shut things down, seal the deal, and take game one. And that is exactly what we are going to do. Final score, 134 to 109. The Sonics take game one off the back of a 31-point performance from Darrell Arnold, 10 assists as well, and then the injured uh, Lefteris Derikis gets it done, 29 points, 11 rebounds, AJ Marsh, 23 points, not too bad, Bohannon with 18, 3 rebounds and 7 assists, you have 11 points for McDaniels, Murray Hopkins only 18 minutes played, but 11 points and 10 rebounds. I love Murray Hopkins, man. What a player. Cato, 11 points in 15 minutes. McKinney, no points in this game. Five rebounds at the very least. And that is exactly what you like to see. Shooting 48% from three. Not too bad at all. I'm surprised the fast break points were as low as they are, considering what our offensive system is. But we got the job done. We take game one. Let's move on to game two. There's really nothing to double check. We know the team's good to go. We're not going to be changing anything about the rotation, about the minutes. We are committed to this. We defended home court in game one. Can we do the same here in game two? And right now it's a much closer first quarter than I would have preferred. Anybody could walk away with the lead here. And, and we are going to up by four, 28-24. At the end of the opening 12 minutes, let's see what happens here moving forward. Can we get any form of separation? The Jazz are staying close. Will there be a change in the lead for the first time really in this game? We've been ahead the whole time. We will be ahead as well at the half. It was 58-50. We'll see here whether or not the offense can really get going. I mean, 10-point lead, staying close to it at least, but you almost expect a little bit more out of this offense, especially after that first game blowout. And right now, we're getting that separation. It's looking much, much better. Outscoring them 32-24 in the third, up 19 to... Or 19, I, I would hope not. Up 90-74 to 74 as we enter the fourth quarter. And with our teams, I'm going to say slightly underrated defensive ability, we should be able to close this one out, but it's, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit closed, or at least it was there for a little bit. It's too little too late for the Jazz. 110-94 to 94 is the final score. We are up 2 to nothing in this series as we take both games and defend home court. Arnold, 37 points in this game. 12 assists, 5 steals. Bohannon... 17 points. Derek is 14 points, 10 rebounds. Murray Hopkins had himself a pretty damn good game as well. Cato with 9 points. 8 points, 11 rebounds for A.J. Marsh. 11 rebounds for McDaniels. So we're doing very well despite trying to, you know, have a faster transition offense. Uh, the rebounds were on point in that game. Shooting wasn't quite where we'd want it, I'd say, necessarily. It's pretty damn good. It's, it's a little bit weak for Utah, however. 18 points to zero on the fast break. So case in point in terms of trying to get that offense going quickly. I mean, hey, it, it worked regardless. I'll take it. We're up two to nothing in this series. Let's jump to game three. No reason to make any changes to this lineup, to the rotation. There is nothing to change right now. We are just letting this team go for it. I don't want to jinx anything, but at the very least, I'm confident in the depth that we have, knowing that we have some half-decent players who aren't getting any playing time right now. Right now, it's it's the big three leading the way. And with Darika's not being at 100%, maybe it's the big two. And overall, things are looking pretty damn good. Halftime of game three, we are up 60 to 51. And we'll see whether or not we can close out this game. If we take that commanding 3 to nothing series lead, 
I don't see how Utah gets back into this series. I really don't. They need a big-time push here to get back into this game and into this series. I also love how gigantic our logo is compared to theirs. It is a very close game. We talked about this. It's still a pretty damn close game. 80-74, to six-point difference as we begin the fourth quarter. Can we get that separation that we're looking for? We've gone a couple of minutes without any points here. We get one point at least. Utah closing the distance. The offense has struggled here. We finally, there we go. Good swinging points there for us overall. Still a four-point lead. Now down to three. Make it two. Make it one. It's going to be very, very close here. Still up by five. Can we hold on? We should be able to. And we do. 107 to 99. Bohannon, 38 points in 40 minutes of play. A.J. Marsh, monstrous. 24 points, 14 rebounds. Arnold, just 16 points, but 10 assists. I'll take it. Cato, 12 points on the night. Dorikas, 8 points, 13 rebounds. 2 assists and 2 steals. You had McDaniels as well, only 5 points, but 13 rebounds. Murray Hopkins, 2 points, 5 rebounds. Same for McKinney in limited time. We have ourselves a 3 to nothing series lead. And if we go ahead and sim up to this next game, I want to get a look at what the bracket's looking like at that point. 3 to nothing San Antonio. I think we are destined to uh, go up against the Spurs here. You have Orlando up 2-1 to one on Golden State. And Vegas with a 3 to nothing series lead on the Knicks. So right now, the only thing I'm wondering is the health of Dorikas. Back up to an 85. He is nearly back to 100%, which is what you like to see. And what I was wondering here, uh, still a one to two week injury, 96% healed. Not bad. Still at risk of re-injury, which again, what I, I love the whole wear and tear, the injury history. That is absolutely tremendous. Uh, Dorikas ties team record for most blocks by a Sonics player in a playoff game. I can see last 10, can I? Recent games. How many blocks do you have? I mean, three blocks, though. That's not saying much. <laughs> Maybe they were talking about the five blocks. It had to have been the five blocks, which, I mean, he's the one who set that record because we've only been to the playoffs twice. But, Lefteris Dorikas, everybody. Let's take a look here. Darrell, how the hell you doing? I mean, 664 percentage, the you know the player efficiency, just he's amazing. Bohannon, not quite as good as you would have expected. Bohannon struggling a little bit this postseason. I mean, still doing very well, of course, but not exactly lighting the world on fire. And it makes you wonder whether or not maybe certain changes are needed. I'm not entirely sure. McDaniel's. I mean, I'm kind of surprised his shooting percentage is that high when he hasn't had too many high-scoring games. But overall, I guess I'm alright with it. Pure point ratings at a minus .4. AJ Marsh is to take a look. Still doing pretty damn well. I mean, you look at what he did in the regular season compared to what he's doing in the postseason. He's a beast. And then Dorikas. Uh, still, I mean, from an, uh, that's the thing. It, it's kind of a similar situation to what we always see in the NHL, right? Or at least in NHL 19. We are doing so well, despite having some of our players underperform. I think at this point, we don't have to risk changing anything. We can just leave it as is and still be okay. But there is room to maybe change some things up. And worse comes to worse. I mean, hell, maybe some of our guys start to turn it around and start to show a little bit more of that offensive touch that they had been lacking previously. Might be a minutes thing, might just be a uh, players underperforming kind of thing. But for now, we have a 3 to nothing series lead on Utah. Let's see if we can close out this game, shall we? The one thing I don't like about Simcast Live, it's just eh, I, I got real I got no real reason to mess around with it. I'm just I'm good to let the team do what it's going to do based off of the strategies that we've set. So let's do it. Game 4. Here in Utah, the Jazz off to a hot start, and they need to be. I think that was the longest lead they've had at any point in this series. 
neck and neck, trading the lead here towards the end of the first. But yet again, we will walk away with the lead heading into the second quarter. We're up 34 to 28. The offense right now a little bit too much, although the Jazz getting a little bit more time at the lead. This is absolutely uh, the most that they have led at any point in this series. They've finally been able to get it going. Whether or not they're able to hold on, though, time will tell. They're up by three. It's 70 to 67 heading into the second half. A very good second quarter for the Jazz overall, putting up nine more points and taking that three point lead. They're not able to hold on to it for very long, though. So we're off to a good run here to begin the third. 13 point game now, all of a sudden, as the Jazz have fallen apart. Outscored 38 to 21 in that third quarter, 105 to 91 with under 12 minutes to play. Can the Jazz get back into it? They're off to a good start, outscoring us 11 to 4 here with seven and a half minutes left. Can they battle back or can we seal the deal to take this series? It is a tie game. No longer, but we are trading the lead back and forth. Our offense has gone completely dormant at this point. And the Jazz might be able to take this. 124 to 115. They're outscoring us 33 to 10. And that's gonna do it. Utah staying alive. Unbelievable. Outscored us 39. After we outscored them 38 to 21 in the third, they outscore us 39 to 12 in the fourth quarter and walk away with the victory. We go back to Seattle for game five. Bohannon, 40 points, 29 for Arnold, Marsh with 18, Dorikas with 12, McDaniels with 10. Not much help in terms of bench scoring, and I think that's the big deal. One point for Hopkins in 19 minutes, three points for McKinney in 16, only four for Cato. The bench was not effective whatsoever in terms of the time that they were given, and that allowed Utah to get back into it. As frustrating as that is, we let that win slip out of our fingertips. And now we have to play at least one more game than San Antonio, who were able to sweep Atlanta. Vegas has also punched their ticket to the next round after sweeping the Knicks. We're not going to make any changes to the lineup or the rotation based off of that game. However, if we lose game five, we will at least have some things to think about. And I think that's going to be the case if we move on to the next round against San Antonio. Regardless, we're going to have some things to think about. There have been some areas of concern, whether or not it's down to minutes, strategy, or just players underperforming. I'm not entirely sure, but needless to say, we could take a little bit of a step up. The good thing is here, we got a decent lead here in the third quarter, up by 13 now, just 11 but I'd like to think we can hold on. I'd like to think we can end this series in five games. Don't know if I'm going to jump in to watch the celebration because I don't know if I want to deal with an empty arena again, as frustrating as that was. But right now, it's it's close. Utah, not exactly out of it. It's a six-point lead with two and a half minutes to go. This game is not over. Under two minutes to go, it's a two-point game, and Utah has taken the lead. It's 103-103 with 38 seconds to go. Here we go. 38 seconds left in regulation. Can we make something happen? And we don't even inbound the ball. At least we have fans in the stands this time. As they get to witness us uh, fail to inbound the ball, that is a hell of a uh, mohawk, Mr. Baz Turk. I congratulate you for that. And we may have just made a drastic mistake. You know why? Because it's my fault. Because I forgot that I had to pause immediately and choose sides. So that's great. That is completely on me because I can't hit play and jump in and say, oh, I want to be a neutral until I'm already in the game. So that's brutal, and we'll see if it manages to cost me the game. There's a decent chance as Oladipo hits that bucket. Okay. 
Love seeing them deliver right there's a really good chance I just managed to cost us game five outside of the outside of the fact of course that we you know kind of completely blew it in game four and we allowed them to score 103 points apparently every single person in that crowd is all in Kyrie Irving player of the game performance that's always fun to see all right, let's see if we can manage an inbound at this time. We did. Darrell, Darrell, please, you have to hit that. Darrell Arnold, you were league MVP. I, I refuse. I refuse to accept that. I refuse. I am so tempted to make Utah miss these two free throws. You know what? I'm blaming the game. I'm blaming the game for that one. No, I don't want Xbox help. Thank you very much. Damn it all. What I want is to go over here. And let's just, uh, yeah, just brick that one. The old Shaquille O'Neal school of basketball. And brick it. There we go. Now we're even because this game won't let me choose sides before I jump into a game. So, you know, there we go. We're all good. They scored on their last possession, but we even it up. We get our possession back because, again, had it let me just choose sides and go to the middle. Uh, once I hit jump into the game, everything would have been fine, but it didn't do that. So damn it, I'll get my revenge. We're all good. Let's see if we can manage to tie this game. I hope we can. McDaniels finds Durrell. Come on, Arnold, I believe in you. You got this. Make something happen. Finds McKinney back door. He gets it. Whew. Surprised McKinney is on in clutch time. Crunch time indeed. But he made it happen. We have a tie game of 14 apiece with no weird factors happening at all. Everything was fine and went as expected. Here we go. Can the defense shut things down? Kyrie and Servin passing back and forth to an unrealistic level. Oladipo with space. And he doesn't miss. That's not good. Here we go. Five seconds. Darrell makes something happen. League MVP takes the shot. Misses it. We're going to game six. Jesus Christ. I can't help but wonder how Darrell Arnold won league MVP when every time we've jumped in to watch gameplay, he misses every single shot that he takes. That said, game six against the Jazz... On the horizon, still not going to make any changes to the lineup just yet. I am going to put faith into the team that has gotten us to this point. We have really struggled to close out this series, mainly from a defensive standpoint. But there's still time. Everything is going to be fine. We'll be okay. I hope. I have no choice but to view it that way. <laughs> Because right now, we are losing in very convincing fashion, and there is a very good chance that this could go 7. Although we have tied up the game, and maybe I'll continue to not show any faith in the team, because that appears to motivate them, which is the right way to go. It's a 7-point lead. Oh god. I so desperately want to avoid a game 7. You have no idea. We lost to LeBron. I can't lose to Kyrie. Please. As we begin to trade the lead with just a few minutes left, this is going to go down to the wire, isn't it? Please let the offense get some separation here. I'm begging you. Oh my god. Six points now with two minutes to go. Can we hold on? It's looking good. Under a minute. Can we hold on? We can. Whoo! 116 to 108 in game six. The Sonics win it. We are moving on. I know we didn't even look at the box score from game uh, from game five, and I'm sorry. The point is, the Sonics are moving on to the conference final. We will be taking on the San Antonio Spurs. And that was much more stressful than I ever thought it would be. Arnold leads the way, Marsh and Bohannon, Bohannon 16 points, 15 assists, absolute rebound, absolute machine. Speaking of absolute rebound machine, Dariq is 13 rebounds, 11 points in 
that game. Victory to the Sonics. We take on the Spurs in the conference championship. We completely blew it last year, but this year we're getting a measure of revenge. An MVP season for Darrell Arnold, who is leading the postseason in assists. We get past Cleveland in five. We get past Utah in six. Whether or not we can get past San Antonio, I have no earthly idea. Let me know again if there should be any changes to this rotation as you get a look at Darrell Arnold. I mean, still on that MVP caliber pace. You look at what he's done in the playoffs. The points are down. The assists are up, though. I don't know if I can complain. With Bohannon, the points are down. The assists slightly up. Again, don't necessarily know if I can complain, but his offensive efficiency has no doubt dropped. That problem needs to be solved. McDaniels, I mean, in terms of his performance in the postseason, I can't complain whatsoever. He's done very, very well, or at least as good as you would have expected. Better than expected. He's, he's done well. He deserves credit for that. A.J. Marsh, I mean, the rebounds have dropped a little bit, but the offensive production has gone up. I mean, I'm very happy with what I've seen out of A.J. Marsh, especially, too, we talked about in that Cleveland series. It would have been Dario there, and Marsh would have been the sixth man. And then Dorikas. I mean, no doubt about it. The offensive production has dropped. Is that due to the injury? Is that due to us removing him as the third option on offense? I don't know. Uh, the shooting percentage, though, has dropped. He hasn't exactly been as uh, critic, you know, as crucial on offense as we've needed him to be, as efficient as we've needed him to be. Murray Hopkins, though, I mean, the points have gone up throughout the course of the playoffs. The rebounds still looking pretty damn good from a for, uh, from an efficiency standpoint. Still looking pretty damn good. You have Sean McKinney. I mean, the numbers have dropped throughout the postseason, unfortunately. I mean, while the shooting percentage is up a little bit, the efficiency numbers are down, which is very disappointing. And then Julio Cato, who has taken advantage of the extra time, still putting up points. I mean, he is, without a doubt, an offensive threat. I mean, the efficiency rating is about equal, you know, about even out, and the shooting percentage is up. So, fair play to Cato. Maybe he deserves a little bit more time. And then, of course, you know, throughout the regular season this year you know Jackie Nash the shooting just wasn't quite there the I mean the ratings weren't quite there either there's a reason why guys like uh, he and Wesley aren't currently in but then of course there's Edmund Sparks who from an offensive standpoint no bueno but he's a defensive specialist and then Davidson of course who we gave all the chances in the world to in the regular season but he just couldn't quite take advantage of it let me know what you think whether or not any changes should be made but for now all we need to know and all that needs to be said. Seattle Sonics in the conference final. We are taking on San Antonio. And over in the uh, east side of the bracket, we'll say, at the very least, let's find out who it's going to be. It is going to be Orlando. So the one against the four, the six against the seven. We'll find out what happens next time. For now you enjoyed the video, leave a like or I'll threaten you with physical violence like all the other bigger YouTubers do. And until next time, have a good one. I'll see you then. Take it easy.